will save and add to the church, as the Bible says, daily, such as should be saved. If there's ever a time to get saved, now's the time. If there's ever a time to look toward the hills from which cometh your help, now is the time. If there's ever a time to call on the name of the Lord, now is the time. So as we prepare our hearts and our minds to go before the Lord in prayer, we certainly do want to remember the state of affairs of, of uh, society and the world and the community on today, uh, that the Lord uh, will show forth his hand. I know in reading the scriptures that the Bible tells us that uh, it's going to get worse before it gets better. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Because why? Because Jesus is in control. Amen? And it's already been prophesied. And then you have to look toward the end where Jesus is going to send his kingdom and straighten up everything. And everything is going to be brought under the power of God. So we certainly do thank God, and as we begin to pray, we want to pray for the success of the service on today, and let everyone that is here under the sound of my voice receive with meekness the engrafted word of God. We want to ask the church to stand, and let every heart pray. Oh, gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you, Lord, we certainly thank you. We praise you for your greatness and your mercy. We praise you, Lord, for how you blessed us and watched over us and kept us even until this very hour. We ask you, Lord, that you strengthen our hearts and our minds and our spirit. Lead us and guide us into all truth. Help us, Lord, to cleave unto you with a purpose in heart. Bless our service on today. Remember men and women and children everywhere in the state of affairs that is not only in this country but all over the world. We ask you, Lord, that you allow your grace and your mercy. Uh, to rest, rule, and abide with us. Not, not, not forgetting that you called us to salvation. You called us to deliverance. You called us, Lord, to walk in your way. And Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you manifest your power in our lives. Destroy every yoke. Break down every stronghold that we might do your will. Hallelujah. To keep your way. This we pray in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to say praise the Lord again. Hallelujah to everybody in their prospective places. And as you know that we've been going over our Bible class, and I'm going to um, just continue because I didn't get to the end of what we were going through or going over. Uh, uh, we're talking about what does the Lord require of thee? And in the book of Malachi, we won't turn there because we'll go to another verse of scripture in the book of Matthew. But in the book of Malachi, uh, number six, in uh, chapter number six, verse number eight, uh, it gives our base scripture. It says, uh, he hath shown thee, O man, what doth the Lord require of thee. And it's very important that we pay attention to what the Lord requires of us. And it says to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. And God has called us literally uh, to do justly, to walk in his way, to, to love mercy, to love everybody at all times, and to walk humbly in, in, with thy God, meaning to conform to his will. And uh, tonight I want to finish up on how we can accomplish that. If God is, has required that of us, then we must, we must, we must do what God requires. Above all else, we must do what God requires. And we have to do what he says for us to do first. Amen? So in looking uh, back in our scriptures, I won't go over and do a whole outline like I did before. Um, you can find these uh, Bible studies on our, on our Facebook page and also on our YouTube page, YouTube page of Christian Ministries. And you can uh, go there and uh, refresh in the name of Jesus. But uh, tonight I want you to turn with me um, to Matthew chapter number 16. To Matthew chapter 16. 
And in that particular verse, uh, as we move toward uh, what we're talking about today is um, fulfilling what God has required of us. How do we do that? And first and foremost, uh, we have to follow the example of Jesus. And uh, in doing that, we have to walk in his way. So I want you to turn with me, to, as I said, to Matthew chapter uh, 16 and uh, verse 24. Jesus had just finished asking his disciples, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And as you know, that Peter said that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, upon this rock I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And then the Bible says that Jesus then begins to talk to them and tell them. Let's, let's look at it. Uh, uh, Matthew chapter 16. Uh, and then drop down uh, to verse 21. Uh, after they had made the declaration. Uh, of who Jesus is. Uh, the Bible says that Jesus literally was now taking them to a higher level of information. He says, from that time forth, Jesus begins to show his disciples how they must, how he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and to be raised again the third day. Now notice verse 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him saying, but be it far from thee, Lord, that uh, this shall not be unto thee. And then notice what Jesus said. Jesus, but he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, for thou for thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things, those things that be of men. So we see here, after the revelation that Peter received about Christ, and Jesus then begins to tell them what is written of him, what is written of him in the scriptures. And then Peter begins to rebuke Jesus and uh, he's saying that this can't be. This ain't the way that it shall end. This is not the idea and the thought of my Messiah. This is not how my Messiah is going to live and, 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 and uh, uh, die for the sins of the world. And Jesus rebuked him because G. Peter was coming at or attacking what is written of him. It wasn't, wasn't Jesus' plan. It was God's plan outlined for his life. And we have to do that as well. When we know and understand what God's will is for us and what God has outlined for us in our lives, we must rebuke every evil spirit and every power of the enemy that comes to deter us from doing the will of God. We must do that. And, and that's what Jesus did because the Bible says it was written of him in the volume of the book to do thy will, O God, and that he would give his life for a ransom, that he would die, and that when, uh, many people would be saved by his life. And Peter was trying to take that away from him. Uh, uh, and, and there's, there's, there's uh, a lot of people that want to take away the will of God out of your life. And you have to guard that with all your heart, with all your might, and with all your strength. And to be, be ready to rebuke every spirit, uh, every foul spirit that would come to hinder you from doing and accomplishing the will of God. Now, notice also in the scriptures when Jesus uh, rebuked them, 
<laughs> Thank you, Lord. Verse 24. And he says, uh, Then Jesus said unto his disciples, He said, If any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. If you're going to do what God's will requires of you, you first and foremost have to deny yourself. In other words, to deny your will. And notice what it said. It said to deny yourself and pick up your cross and follow me. So what, what Jesus was saying is that we have to see ourselves as crucified with Christ. Uh, Paul said it this way, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but what? Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, he said, I live by the faith of the Son of God. And that's what we have to do. We have to see ourselves crucified with Christ and be willing to give our life for him and be obedient unto death. Unto what death? Even the death of the cross. So, well, uh, I got to pick up my cross, he said, and follow him. Be obedient. So, what Jesus is actually saying, he's saying that uh, whatever the will of God is, whatever God is requiring of me, I have to submit myself to it. Uh, when it comes down to giving uh, tithes and offerings, I got to submit myself to it. When it comes down to uh, reconciling, I got somebody that, that, that I'm having issues with and they're having issues with me. I got to find in the scriptures what doth the Lord require. And it tells me to go be reconciled to that individual. And I have to submit myself, you know, regardless of my feelings, Regardless of how it looks, regardless of whether or not I'm right or I'm wrong, I have to pick up my cross, pick up my feelings, if you allow me to say it. Why? Because I'm crucified with Christ. And do what God has said. I, I got to do what God has said in every area of my life. In every area of your life, you have to find out what God requires and do it. Uh, and, and submit to it uh, and deny yourself. Hallelujah. Deny what you think. Deny how you feel and give of yourself to do the will of God. If you, if, you, if you know to do good and you do it not, the Bible says it is sin unto you. If, and and that's, that's another part of this particular scripture uh, that people will try to avoid. They say, well, I didn't, I, I didn't know it was in the scriptures, so I'm not accountable for it. And, and that's a false accusation. That's a false way of thinking. Because uh, God said, study to show yourself. He told you to read his word. He told you to meditate on his word and not allow it to depart from your mind. Amen? Thank you, Lord. So ignorance is not an excuse. Thank you, Lord. God, God, God has given us opportunity uh, to come to Sunday school and to come to Bible study and to come to, to, to church services. And then he tells you to study on your own. Amen. Thank you, Lord, so you can know what God requires. Now, now notice what Jesus said. Hallelujah. He said, if any man come after me, if anybody, if, if you're going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ and come after him. He says, he says, uh, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life will what? Lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. He said, what profit of a man if he gain the whole world and lose his soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? So, so Jesus is saying that, uh, verse 27, For the Son of Man uh, shall come in his glory of the Father with his angels, and then shall 
uh, then he shall reward every man according to his works. And that's what I want to hit on. The, the Lord, he sees your works. Your works is doing what's right. Amen. And he's going to reward you. Thank you, Lord, for you doing what's right. He's not going to reward you for doing what's wrong. That's punishment, isn't it? <laughs> thank you, Lord. So when Jesus comes and at the end, thank you, Lord, when as you sacrifice for him, he's going to reward you for your sacrifice. But you've got to deny yourself. Amen? Hallelujah. Pick up your cross and follow him. How do you deny yourself? In every scripture, in every assignment, if you're going to be a good husband, you got to deny yourself and be a good husband. If you're going to be a good wife, you've got to deny yourself and be a good wife. If you're going to be a good leader, you have to deny yourself and be a good leader. If you're going to be a good follower, you have to deny yourself and be a good follower. Amen? Whatever the assignment is, if you're going to be a good Sunday school teacher, you've got to deny yourself and be a good Sunday school teacher. Whatever the assignment, if you're going to work on your job, hallelujah, you, whatever the assignment is, you've got to do what God requires of you. Amen? And that comes with self-denial. Why? Because you've been crucified with Christ. Amen? Your old man has been put to death. Thank you, Lord. And, and now you're the servant of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm glad to be the servant of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, so that's, that's number one. Thank you, Lord, on how to do what God requires. Number one, on how to do what God requires, you've got to deny yourself. Amen? Thank you, Lord. I want to go over, I want you to go with me over to the book of St. James. Hallelujah, my God. I'm sorry. Um, yes, the book of St. James. James chapter number one. And we were hitting on that last week. Uh, and we we're talking about the book of James and we we're talking about testing trials. Testing trials uh, God uses to prove you, to prepare you so that you can see what's in your heart. To see whether or not you obey him or not. To see whether or not you love him. So in James chapter number one, I want to drop down now to verse number 12. Thank you, Jesus. To verse number 12. Amen? You have it? Say amen. So James chapter number one and verse number 12, it says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. And we read that scripture in the book of St. Matthew. Remember, Jesus said that he was going to reward everybody according to their works. And that's a promise. Amen? A promise from the Lord. So in order to do that first, you've got to endure every test and every trial and every temptation. And notice, my God, uh, that sounds like a tall order, doesn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. My God. But notice, notice what he says. He said, you're blessed. He said, blessed. Thank you, Lord, is the man that endured, that, that is able to go through. Amen? That is able to, 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 to persevere. That is able to, to, to abide. Every temptation. Now notice, when he says they're blessed, I want you to get this aspect in your mind of what that means that you are blessed when you don't give in to your temptation. Go with me over here to the book of Deuteronomy. Oh God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Deuteronomy chapter 33. Amen? Deuteronomy chapter 33. And this uh, particular chapter, Moses is 
blessing the children of Israel through the word of God. He's blessing them. Amen. And uh, Deuteronomy chapter 33 is a, a direct definition for what it means to be blessed in James chapter number 1 and verse 19. It, 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 I'm sorry, uh, James chapter number 1 uh, and verse number 12. It gives us a definition of what it means to be blessed. Amen? So in, in Deuteronomy chapter 33 and drop down all the way to verse 39. Thank you, Lord. And, and, and I mean, 29. Thank you. 29. Deuteronomy 33 and verse 29. Notice what he says. Happy are thy. This, that word blessed means to be happy. Amen. You notice, he says, Happy are thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee. O, o people saved by the Lord, thy shield of thy help, who is the sword of thy excellence, and thy enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. So what, what, what he's saying here is, a blessed person, a happy person, First and foremost, they, they recognize that they are under God's protection. Do you believe that you're under God's protection? That the hand of the Lord is over you and you're saved? When, when you know that, you are blessed because God himself is making ways for you. God himself is on your side. That that whatever happens to you and God allows it, God is allowing it for your good. That's why you're blessed. That's why you can be happy. That's why how you can literally count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. I'm blessed. Why? Because I'm secure in God. Why? I'm blessed because I can rest in Him. That, that he's going to control all of my enemies. He's, he's watching over my soul. Hallelujah. And I don't have to worry. I don't have to fear. Huh? What can man do unto me? Why? Because I'm blessed. Huh? Because the Lord is my shield. He is my protector. He is my buckler. Hallelujah. And he is my provider. Uh, God doesn't even want you to worry about your next meal. That's how blessed you are. God doesn't want to, you to worry about where you're going to lay your head. That's how blessed you are. God does not want you to worry about uh, the attacks of the enemy. Why? Because he'll, he'll, he'll cause you to triumph over all your enemies. Because uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Those are God's promises. Hallelujah unto you. So you knowing that and armed with that thought in every test, in every trial, God wants you to prosper. Uh, thank you, Lord. You, now, we're not ignorant of Satan's devices. Hallelujah. And God does not want you to be ignorant uh, when you're going into temptations or when you're being tried. That's why he says you're blessed when you endure them. Hallelujah. Why? Because you know God is on your side. You know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You know that if you're in it, you're going to win because you're more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. That's where the blessing comes from. You knowing him that is able to do exceedingly, that is able to do abundantly, above all that you're able to ask or think, according to what? That dunamis power that worketh in you. Hallelujah. You got power. You got authority. Hallelujah. God wants you to exercise your power and your authority by you walking by faith and not by sight. By you speaking his word and by your faith in God's word, hallelujah, things shall be accomplished. My God. Now, let me just stop right here just for a moment and talk about your faith. Your faith 
It's not in your ability. Hallelujah. It's not in what you can do. Thank you, Lord. Your faith should reside in the attributes of God. Hallelujah. And let me say that again. Your faith resides in or rests in God's ability and who God is. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's omnipresent, isn't he? Hallelujah. He's omnipotent, isn't he? He's all-knowing, isn't he? He declared the end from the beginning, hasn't he? Hallelujah. And, and what God has said, it shall come to pass. Am I right? Hallelujah. And that's where your faith is. Hallelujah. That he is a, a provider. Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. That he is a healer. Hallelujah. That he is your peace. Hallelujah. That's where your faith is. Not in man's ability. We don't put confidence in man. Hallelujah. We put confidence in God. Amen. And, and that's where the blessing is. That's why he said blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because you know these things. Huh? You can trust in these things. And by you knowing these things and trusting in God, you're blessed. Because God is on your side. Hey, hallelujah. God is on our side. He's a protector. Huh? He's a shield. Huh? He's our help. Hallelujah. And that's what uh, uh, that word blessed means. Now notice uh, in verse 29. He said, happy are thou, O, o Israel, who is like unto thee. Huh? Now you've got to put yourself in that scripture. Hallelujah. Who is like unto you? You peculiar treasure. You royal priesthood. You holy nation. You chosen generation. You've been bought with a price. Out of the precious blood of Jesus. Who is like unto you? Hallelujah. That have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Who is like unto you? That God has opened your eyes. Uh, so that you can believe in the true and living God. Who is like unto you that Jesus is your Savior? Uh, that Jesus is your deliverer? Hallelujah, uh, that Jesus paid the price for all of your sin and your iniquity. Who is like unto you? Hallelujah, uh, if you should die, uh, you just go to sleep in Christ. Uh, who is like unto you that you can call legions of angels and they come down and see about you? Who is like unto you that you can speak things into existence? Hallelujah, that you can walk by faith and not by sight. Hallelujah, who is like unto you? Hallelujah, a sinner saved by grace. Hallelujah, that's why David said, uh, his goodness and mercy uh, shall follow me all the day. Who? Now, hallelujah. Who, who else has goodness and mercy? I'm following them all, not just sometime, but all the days of their life. Hallelujah. God, you're somebody special. Hey, hallelujah. You're somebody special. Hallelujah. And God is on your side. That come on, shot. Hallelujah. That God be for you. I said, if God be for you, who then can be against you? Hallelujah. That's why, that's why you're blessed. Huh? Even when you mourn, you blessed. You shall be comforted. Even if you poor, you blessed. Huh? Because uh, you, you shall inherit the earth. That come on, shot. You just blessed. Hallelujah. You blessed when men shall revile you and say all manner of evil against you falsely. Huh? For his name's sake. He tells you to do what rejoice. Uh, and be exceedingly glad. That's why you blessed. Hallelujah. You know that whatever you're going through, even now, I'm trying to get you down. Hey, hallelujah. Even what you're enduring right now. Hallelujah. I don't know what it is. Hallelujah. But but I can tell you this, you blessed. Hey, and if, and if God says you blessed, can't no bayrack uh, 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 curse you. Hallelujah. If God says you blessed. Hallelujah. Can't nobody put a curse on you. Hey, my God. Hallelujah. So notice what he said. My God, my God, I got to move on here. Thank you, Jesus. Huh? He says, happy are thou, O Israel, 
who is like unto thee, O saved by the Lord. That's why you're blessed. You saved. Yeah. Amen? Saved. Saved right now. Amen? Saved right now. Jesus would have cracked the sky. Saved right now. Hallelujah. Yeah. And, 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 and yeah, I'm striving to do good. I'm striving to do better. Huh? He's going to impute righteousness unto me. Hallelujah. Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah. Saved right now. Huh? Eternal life abiding right now. Hallelujah. Protected, secure right now. Hallelujah. Though, though, though a whole shit encamp against us, huh? we shall not fear. Why? Because we saved right now. Hey, hallelujah. Though the enemy come up against us like a flood, I'm saved right now. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against us. Hey, hallelujah. Saved right now. Uh, right now, saved. Amen. Right now, saved. Right now, delivered. Right now, set free. Yeah, I'm struggling with it, but I'm saved right now. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm fighting the good fight of faith, but I'm saved right now. Hallelujah. Saved right now. Hey, I got the help of the salvation. Saved right now. Uh, yeah, I'm struggling. I'm, I made a few mistakes, but I got the blood of Jesus. Saved right now. Hey, hallelujah. That's that's because that's the blessing. Huh? That's the blessing of the Lord. Saved right now. Delivered right now. Hey, hallelujah. Yeah. Hey, hallelujah. If you're bold and you're confident in your God, hallelujah, you lift up your bow down here. You strengthen your feeble knees. Hallelujah, you walk through your tests and your trials. I'm air to the most shock. Hallelujah, why? Because you see Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Notice what he said. I got to move on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He said, O people saved by the Lord. Now notice. He said, the Lord is the shield, the shield of thy health. Who is the sword of thy excellence? So that shield is used for protection. Amen? God is your protector. Yes. Huh? Thank you, Lord. He, he, he protects you. And he's the sword. Thank you, Lord, of thy excellence. So, so he fights with you, for you, for ex through, through excellency. Amen. He fights for you in an excellent way. Amen. That 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 so that you will never lose. Though it may seem like you're losing, it may seem like you're going down. Amen. God will turn that thing around. Hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. By all accounts, you could have been dead and gone. God, God will turn it around. In a moment, and a twinkling of an eye, he'll turn it around. It looked like Jesus was losing when he was being beat on that cross. Uh, it looked like Jesus was losing when they speared him in the south. It looked like a ghost and he died. Hallelujah. But, but somebody said the number of three is divine protect, the divine, hallelujah, divine order. So on the third day, that kind of a shot, he got up out of that crate. Uh, and when he got up, he got up with all power. Hallelujah. When, when you die in your shirt, hallelujah, and when you make the change, hallelujah, you get up out of your test, you should come out of it with all power. Devil shot. Hallelujah, my God. Hallelujah, my God. We got to move on. I'm teach preaching up in here. Thank you, Lord. But I feel good in my spirit. Thank you, Lord. And, 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 and thine enemies. You blessed. You don't have to worry about your enemies. Amen. You should not give yourself to sleepless nights. Worrying about what the enemy is saying or trying to do to you. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about them. Amen. Hallelujah. Because they don't matter. Uh, in, the, in the divine scope of things, they don't matter. Why? Because God is your protection. God is your shield. God is your deliverance. Amen? Hallelujah. So, so you don't fear the face of your enemies. Don't fear the faces of man. That's what he told Joshua. Hallelujah. When Joshua was uh, going to fight and lead the children over, to the promised land 
What did he tell Joshua? He told Joshua to, to be strong. Amen? Be very courageous. Be bold. Don't look to the left nor to the right. God gave him a promise. He said, I've, I've given them into thy hands. Amen? Only God has given us a promise. Thank you, Lord, that he's given the enemy into our hands. Amen? Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Faith says it is. Faith. Faith says it is so. <laughs> I said, faith says it is so. Hallelujah. God says it is so. His word says it is so. Hallelujah. So, so, so don't be afraid of the terror by night. Uh, or that which, which want to come to destroy you at noonday. Don't be afraid. Amen. Hallelujah. Now notice, I got to finish this up. Then we got to move on. Uh, notice. And, and they shall be found liars because they're talking about you, lying on you. Thank you, Lord. The Bible said they shall be found liars. Now I turned off the air. I put on that heat. That was last week when it was cold. I should have put on that air. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. But notice. And he says, the enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. Uh, a high place is where the enemy sets up his camp for evil, idolatrous worship. Amen? God's saying that he's going to give you power over the, the, the forces of the enemy. Amen? Do we believe that? That's why we got to know we're blessed. Thank you, Lord. Because we've got a lot that, that comes up against us. Amen? The enemy, he tries to kill, steal, and to destroy. Amen? And we've got to realize that we're in a serious fight. Amen? Though I say don't worry about the enemy, uh, what, what, what I mean by that is that you ain't got to worry about his attacks. But you've got to uh, be wise. You've got to be watchful. Huh? You've got to be vigilant. You've got to be sober. Why? Because your adversary, the devil, huh, is he's roaming about seeking whom he can what? Devour. He's seeking those that, that, that depart from the walking under the shadow of the Almighty. He want, he's looking for those that have stopped dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Hallelujah. He's looking for those that, 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 that are getting weak in the faith. Hallelujah. To kind of steal and to destroy and to kill them. But you've got to realize, hallelujah, that, 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 that I'm in God and God's in me. And as long as I'm doing what God requires, huh, if he abides in me and I abide in him, I can ask what I will. Hallelujah, and it shall be. Amen? That's that confidence we have in him. That's that hope we have in him. Amen? So now, let's go back. Let's go back then and look at James chapter, oh, my God, James chapter number one and verse number 12. Notice what it says. It says, blessed, and we've defined that word blessed. <laughs> He said, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Amen. You've got to endure. Be patient in your testing. Amen. Wait on God. Huh? Wait on God. And while you're waiting on God, realize that, that God, when he tests you, when he tempts you, that he's training you. He's trying to show you something. He's revealing to you some things. Amen? He's teaching you. Amen? When the devil is testing you, he's trying to kill you. <laughs> he's trying to destroy you. Huh? He's trying to steal not your goods, but he's trying to steal your salvation. Amen? Hallelujah, my God. And when people test you, they're doing the same thing that the devil is trying to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, my God. Hey, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And your response, my God, your response to every test, if, it's, if God is testing you, you should humble yourself. Amen. Submit yourself. The Bible says God resists the proud, 
but he gives grace to the humble. Amen. Whatever God is putting you through, humble yourself. Submit yourself. Learn from God. If it's the devil testing you, he says resist the devil. Steadfast. Amen. You don't, you don't humble yourself in the midst of the test of the devil. If it's the devil tempting you with evil, you don't humble yourself. You don't submit yourself. You resist the devil. Ha! Steadfast. Hallelujah. And he shall flee. Hallelujah. There's, there's different ways. That's why you got to know where the test comes from and who's tested. Thank you, Lord. The devil, he, if, it's, if it's evil, that's the devil. Huh? 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 And if your flesh wants it, <laughs> that's the devil. Because he's going after your flesh and the lust thereof. Amen? But, but now, if it's something from God and it's causing you to grow, God is challenging you, trying to build you up, giving you an assignment, all of you are causing you to, uh, to be obedient, to walk in righteousness, you know that's God. Hallelujah. If, it's, if, if I got an all against my brother and sister and I feel the test, that's God. Amen. To go reconcile, to get it together. If, if I got an assignment, thank you, Lord. God I got an assignment to do something and I'm resisting the assignment. Oh, I, and you know that's God. Hallelujah. That, that is putting that pressure on you. So you should submit yourself. Hallelujah. There's a difference. You've got to know what the difference is. Oh, my God. My God. I wish, I wish we could get that point down in our sanctified soul. Hallelujah. To know the difference between good and evil. Hallelujah. And that's what he told Daniel to do. He told Daniel, I want you to do great exploits. And what he meant by that is, Daniel, I want you to resist the good. I want you to resist the evil and follow after the good. That's what God wants us to do. Resist the evil and follow after the good. Amen. That's great in the sight of God. When you do that, that's great in the sight of God. Hallelujah. You ain't got to climb a mountain. That kind of old son of a bush. You ain't got to cross the Red Sea. Hallelujah. Just deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Hallelujah. And do good to your fellow, fellow brother or sister. Hallelujah. Keep God command. Hallelujah. That's what God calls doing good. Hey, hallelujah. Great exploit. Now notice then. He said, blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, notice, when he is tried, uh, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So when, when you are obedient to God and you endure the temptation, I want you to see in that verse what's necessary. In order to endure temptation, you have to, with that last part of that verse said, love him. You got to love him. You got to love him. You need to underline that in your Bible. If you're going to endure any type of temptation, any test, regardless of where it comes from, you first and foremost have to love him. With all your heart, with all your might, and with all your strength. That's who the promise is to. Notice what he said. For which the Lord have promised to them that what? Love. love him. You've got to love him. And able to endure through temptation. I want you, I want to prove this to you in a moment. I want you to turn with me to the book of St. John. The book of St. John. Chapter 20. 22. I'm sorry, 21. I'm putting books in there. Man. <laughs> this is Peter. St. Peter. St. John, I'm sorry. Uh, Chapter 21. This is Peter. And y'all know what Peter did. He 
denied Jesus. Amen. Denied him. Peter was rebellious. Took that knife and cut off that, that guy's ear. Could have destroyed the whole plan. Amen. Jesus put that ear back on so that so that Peter wouldn't be brought to the courts. <laughs> Y'all know him. Amen. So that Peter wouldn't be tried in the courtroom. Where's the evidence? The man still got his ear. <laughs> in other words, Jesus dropped the charges <laughs> on Peter. Why? Because he was going to use Peter. Amen? Have you ever thought about that in your own life? That, that you've done some things that you should have been locked up. You should have been killed. You should have been destroyed. But God's hand of grace was upon you. And protected you. Uh, why? Because he was going to use you. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. Why? Because he was going to deliver you. Yeah. Some, some scandalous things could have got up out on you. Uh, that you've done. Thank you Lord. But, but God hid those things. Won't allow people to talk about it. Why? Because God is going to use you. Yeah. Amen. Uh, that's, what, that's what was going on here with Peter. Amen. God was going to use him. Yeah, shout out to my son. Didn't he use him? Opened up the church doors. 3,000 souls got saved. Preached his next sermon. 5,000 souls got saved. Went to the Gentiles. Preached unto them Jesus. And they received the Holy Ghost. Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now notice. Notice here. Talking about that love. Amen. Peter needed to be restored. And notice what Jesus did. Verse 15. He says, So when they had died, Jesus said unto Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, notice what he said. What did he say? That lovest thou more me more than these? Peter said, yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, what? Feed my lambs. Notice. He said unto him again, the second time, Simon, son of our Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He said unto them, feed my sheep. Huh? He said unto him, the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved. In other words, he was convicted. Huh? He was convicted. Healing is starting to set in. Deliverance is starting to set in. He said, because he said to him, the third time, lovest thou me? He said it unto him, uh, thou knowest all things. And knowest that I love thee. And Jesus said unto him, Feed my sheep. Now notice, Peter had fallen by the wayside. Peter needed to get back up. Jesus asked him, said unto him, Simon, lovest thou me? And then when Peter acknowledged his love, he told him, continue a sign. Feed my sheep. Feed my lamb. Amen? When, when we go through trials and tribulations, what puts us back on track is our love for Jesus. You've got to love him. Uh, more than anything else. Amen? Your love for him will cause you to carry out your assignment, to be obedient, to do the will of God. Amen? Hallelujah. If you don't, if you question your love for him, you need to come to the altar. Amen? Fall on your knees and cry out to God. Amen? Till you get that love. Hallelujah. Where you are persuaded that nothing shall separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Be persuaded. Now, you, the third thing, the first thing you got to have, well, I, I'm going to call it the first thing we talked about, is, is, is deny yourself. You got to have now, if you're going to be obedient to his will, you got to, you got to also uh, love the Lord. Amen? You got to love him. Amen? You have to reverence his word. Because if you don't reverence the word, it shows that you don't love him. Amen? Because he said, if you love me, you'll do what? Keep my commandments. If you love me, you'll keep my word. You'll keep what I'm saying. Amen? Now, let's move on. Y'all ready? Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Now, let's drop down again to James uh, 19. James 1 and 19. When you have it, say amen. Thank you, Lord. 18 says, uh, of his own will begot us with the word of truth. Uh, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. But uh, I'm on verse 19. Uh, in order for you to do what God requires of thee, to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God, you have to do what verse 19 says. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Then it says, verse 21, Wherefore, lay aside all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. So that verse 19 and through uh, verse 21, it deals with being a hearer and a doer of the word. But it, it talks to you specifically, if you're going to do what God says, You've got to control your tongue. Huge. You've got to control your tongue. You've got to control your anger. You've got to control your behavior. Let me say that again. That's huge. If you're going to walk with God, you've got to control your tongue. Watch what you say. Every idle word is going to be judged. Everything. You can't say every and anything and, and, and be holy and be blessed. You've got to control your anger. Can't allow yourself to be walking around like a powder keg. Folks say something to you, you go, you going off the deep end. <laughs> And you've got to control your behavior swift to run to mischief. Now, let's take it another, let's take it another level. When it comes to you doing what God requires you to do, you've got to be swift to hear. In other words, be attentive to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto you. In other words, you've got to be mindful. If you want to walk with God, you've got to be mindful and be swift to hear what thus saith the Lord, what thus saith the Holy Ghost. That's why when you read God's Word and study God's Word, uh, that Holy Ghost brings you back the Word. And you've got to listen Usually your first mind is the mind you should follow. Usually your first thoughts, usually now. I ain't say all. Oh, 
And I, and I love the way uh, how you put that. You've got to be quick. Amen. Your reflexes are got to be quick. God has given us what we call the automatic uh, nervous system. Amen. It's, it, it's, it's quick. Thank you, Lord. I was, I was uh, getting me some coffee at Tim Hortons. And this bird flew off the, uh, the roof into the bushes where I was, uh, I was next to the bushes. And, but the bird looked like it was going to come to me. And, I, and I'm jerking, you know, because I thought, I didn't think about it. But in my mind, it, it, it was quick to process, oh, here comes some danger. Here comes some danger. Uh, react quickly so that that danger don't get you. Amen. That's the way we got to do with our thoughts in the word of the Lord. We've got to receive God's word and, and react quickly. Amen. To depart from that danger. Amen. Don't fool around with the enemy. Don't fool around in the devil's camp. Amen. Get out of there quick. Be like Joseph when Potiphar's wife was trying to subduce him. Amen. He said, I can't do this ungodly thing against God. Huh? And he fleed, left his coat, huh? left everything. That's what the Bible says. Flee ungodliness. Amen. Yes. Be swift to hear. Yes. You know, uh, you got to be able to, to, to get it right now. Right now. You know, we don't have time. To right. Stop. Right. You got to do it right now. Right. So that means that you got to continue being focused. Focus. Yeah. Pay attention. Yeah, you have to be paying attention at all times. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I remember, Sister Louise, when you were teaching your Sunday school class, you would tell them all the time, pay attention. Yeah. Pay attention. Then we get a little rude there. My children back there laughing at me. Tell them, pay attention. Oh, hallelujah. Be focused. Uh, I had Lord. Hallelujah. Now notice what he said. Uh, uh, let me go over this again. He said, uh, verse uh, 19, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, lay aside uh, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. When you are trying to accomplish God's will, you've got to be swift to hear what thus saith the Holy Ghost. Process it. Amen? And then be slow to speak. Don't allow your thoughts to get in the way of doing what God requires. Don't be there trying to put up strongholds against why you shouldn't do this. Don't sit down and try to analyze. Amen? Because you'll come up and, and you'll build a stronghold in your mind. And then it says, be slow to wrath. Don't get angry because God is asking you to do A, B, and C. Jesus said, blessed is he that is not offended in me. Don't get offended in the Lord. Don't get upset with Jesus. Y'all seen people, people, family members die. They all mad. Uh, why did this happen? Why is, if God was so much of a loving God, why does all this happen? Why all these people die? Did they get upset? Huh? Jeremiah, a uh, perfect example. Let's go over uh, to the book of uh, uh, Jeremiah, chapter number 20. Thank you, Lord. Let me get there with you. Isaiah, Jeremiah. And you know, Jeremiah was a prophet. Uh, and he spoke some hard things. And some of the things he spoke was, was rough. But Jeremiah, drop down to Jeremiah chapter 20. Uh, chapter, chapter 20, verse 9. Well, let's look at verse number 7. Because <laughs> Jeremiah got thrown in jail for prophesying, for preaching. Amen? Notice what he said. He said, O Lord, Thou hast 
deceived me. <laughs> My God. I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I and, and hast prevailed. I am in a derision daily. Every man, everyone mocketh me. For since I spake, I cried out, and I cried violence and spoil. Because that's what he was telling them. He was telling Israel, you going to, you, 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 they're going to take you into captivity. Amen? He had to preach that word. And that's why I got thrown in jail. Because the, because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me, and I was in, I, in a derision daily. Notice verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, <laughs> nor speak any more in his name. He was, he was offended. <laughs> but notice, he said, but his word was in my heart. Notice, it was in my heart. Uh, it was in my heart uh, as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary with forbearing. I came weary with not speaking. Huh? And I could not stay. Notice, he, he had some issues. But what saved him? The word. And where was the word? In his heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I won't sin against thee. Amen? He didn't want to carry out his assignment, but that word magnified in his heart and it became like a burning fire uh, propelling him to move. Uh, causing him to move. If you have the word of God in you, which is the scripture says, the engrafted word of God. Amen? If that word is in you, if you have internalized that word and literally made it to become a part of your thoughts, ah, the Lord said, not a part of your thoughts, they have become your thoughts. You've got to allow that word to become your thoughts. <laughs> and when that word becomes your thoughts, it'll be like fire. Uh, shut up. You can't force that. You got to do his will. You got to move. Hey, you got to see about what does the Lord require. Hey, Lord, why? Because it's compelling you. It's moving you. But people who don't care about the word ain't going to have that fight. Ah, people who are half-hearted, hit and miss. Lackadaisical huh? about God's word. Huh? They're not going to have that fight. But those that are like Job, that say, Lord, huh? I, I esteem your word higher than my necessary food. Those that, that, that realize that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. I need God's word. You got to come to that point that I need his word. As the deer panted after the water broke, so panted my soul. My soul panted. Uh, I need to be in your presence. Uh, I need to be in your word. Until it becomes like that, if you can take it or leave it, if you can miss days of reading his word, Oh my God, you in a bad shape. I don't care if you read it four times a week, you in a bad shape. You got to read God's word daily. Daily. Huh? Jesus said you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. All right, let's finish it up. My God, we're going to get through this tonight. James, we're back over in James. James chapter number one. Notice what he said. Verse 19. He says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, notice your conduct. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. 
For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Now notice your conduct. Verse 21. Wherefore lay us apart all filthiness. You gotta, you gotta check your behavior. If you're gonna do God's word, you can't be entangled with the yoke of bondage. He said you gotta lay apart all filthiness, everything that's filthy. Uh, notice what he says. Superfluity of naughtiness. And, and that means excessive naughtiness. Uh, people do some naughty things. Uh, corruptible, evil things. Amen? Get rid of that. Stop doing that. And notice what he says. Like, like Jeremiah did. He received with meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to save your soul. You've got to receive God's word. Amen? With meekness. That's what it means to be slow to speak, swift to hear, slow to wrath. You're receiving the word of God. Don't wrestle with God's word to your own destruction. If you know what God's word requires, do it. Amen? Now notice, let's move on. But notice, verse 22, but be what? Doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceiving yourself. Just can't listen to what I'm saying. You've got to put it into action. And if you don't put it into action, who are you deceiving? Yourself. Because God is not mocked. <laughs> Amen. God won't be mocked. Hallelujah. Now notice what he says. Don't, if you, don't be a doer. But only a hear, you're only deceiving yourself. Notice, verse 23. For if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his face in a natural glass. And that natural glass is a mirror. All right? It's a mirror. Okay? So he says, says, says he's liking the word of God to being a mirror. He says, he looks in the mirror, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. So he said, it's like, before you leave the house, you go to the, to the mirror, and you look, and you see a big old snot booger in your nose. Filthy, nasty, and you dirty. And then you walk out of the mirror and you go about your business thinking nobody see it. And everybody looking at you strange and you wondering why they looking at you strange. People backing up from you. You wonder why they're back. That, that's like, that's like you, you look in, in the mirror and you see all matter of wickedness and evil, uh, 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 all deformities. And you act like everything okay. So that's what he's saying. You look into this word of God, which reveals you to you. It's the perfect law of liberty. Amen. And you forget. That you're wretched, undone, unclean. You forget what God requires of you. Amen? What he's saying is, you look, you read in this word, you find out what God requires, and then when you walk out the door, you act like you don't know what nothing. You forget all your training. You forget what to do. This is what he's saying. You know what to do, but when you leave or when you stop reading, you act like God ain't said nothing. People are like that. You know, God revealed this to me, and we gotta move on. That people like that are ungodly. The scriptures define sinners. Sinners are people who 
uh, uh, for practice sin all day, every day, and have never been regenerated, been saved, born again. That's a sinner. An ungodly person is a person that knows the word of God, but they act as though God does not exist. They live without God. And Psalms 1 tells you where an ungodly and the sinner will end up. Amen? We get deep up in here now. Thank you, Lord. All right, now, look. Let's, let's move on. Where we at? Uh, verse... Verse 24. All right. He said, For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Verse 25. But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty. The perfect law of liberty is the word of God, which is designed. Liberty means to bring you freedom. Amen. God's word is designed to free you. <laughs> hey, the Bible says who the Son is set free is what? <laughs> free me. And he calls that the first law of liberty. Now here we go. And continue it. You got to continue in it. Every day. All day. No stop, start, stop, start. All day. Every day. Continue it. In, therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a what? A doer of what? The work. What work? The word of God. It's a work. <laughs> huh? This man shall be what? Blessed in what? All his deeds. So the obedience principles is you got to reverence God. You got to deny yourself. You got to love him. You got to be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, and you got to continue in the word. Amen? Lay aside all filthiness, <laughs> a superfluity of naughtiness. Don't that sound, say that, superfluity of naughtiness. Uh, that sounds pretty good. I like the way that sounds. Stop being naughty. Amen? Huh? And, and receive. Receive God's word. And that word receive means to internalize it. When people give you clothes, you receive them, don't you? And then you put them on. You wear them, don't you? Huh? I'm talking about clothes you like. <laughs> you receive them, you put them on and, and you wear them proud. Receive God's word. Put on the word, the word of God and wear it proud. Amen? Walk with your God. Amen? Come on and give God a praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I praise God. I thank God for the Bible study. Amen. Amen. On today, I thank God for the Bible study. Thank God for all those that have tuned in uh, on Facebook Live that are here with us. We want to pray that God will bless you and you have opportunity to give through Tithely. Amen. And uh, just follow Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. Amen. Thank God. All right. And we thank, we thank God for...